When it comes to DCS immersion, there's only one way to make it better. And that's with one of these. VR. I should probably turn it on. Oh, my world just got better. As most of you are aware, I was recently provided with a Crystal VR HMD by Pimax. Thanks, Pimax. It's been my first foray into the VR world and it's completely blown me away at just how good it is. I can't go back to 2D because the experience in VR has completely changed the feel and the immersion of flying in DCS world. As I've said previously, I think VR will be the best way to truly enjoy DCS World in the next three years. The game is getting better and the periphery tech surrounding flight sims right now has also become better and generally more affordable as well while still providing top-notch componentry that lends itself very well to the use of VR hardware and with VR hardware in mind. It's a competitive business though, as numerous manufacturers vie for consumer dollars. We have a wide variety of headsets available from numerous manufacturers and a broad range of price points spread across the genre to pull you in. This makes it challenging to decide which one to go for, especially when for most of us the investment is still significant. Flight sims and auto racing sims are an addictive and expensive hobby and even the Pimax Crystal, while certainly not the most expensive HMD out there, is still going to set you back around 1500 bucks. Additionally, there is the knowledge that VR isn't quite plug and play hardware just yet, especially with some game software like DCS World, which was never really built around VR hardware. While ED has made major strides in this area in the last few years, the experience isn't seamless when it comes to interfacing VR with the game and with your computer. You're going to need some time on setup and system settings, additional software setup, and if you miscalculate, potentially even hardware upgrades. In short, I guess the question is, is it worth it given all these potential impediments like price point, setup, and software upgrades? Well, once again, it's the unparalleled immersion and realism which makes the short answer yes. It simply leaves 2D experiences for dead. I think if you're a dedicated DCS player looking for that true immersion feeling, VR will not disappoint. And if you're looking for a VR headset, you're going to want the best visuals while also having the support of high frame rates. And I think for the most part, the Pimax Crystal delivers in that area. No doubt there are headsets that provide the same or similar results. And without a direct comparison, in fairness, I can't provide you with that analysis. But here's what I've been enjoying about the Pimax Crystal thus far and some of the things well, which aren't so great. Let's start with the pros of the Pimax Crystal VR HMD. High levels of detail, 2880 by 2880 pixels per eye. You're never short on high quality images with DCS and which the game is really renowned for now. While still getting pretty decent frame rates, although I think I have mine locked currently at around 60 FPS for recording, I have been able to get frame rates well beyond that though. It's difficult for me to be truly objective about that, as often I'm flying on unreleased maps which are subject to variables other players may not experience, as these maps go through various iterations, updates, changes, and bug fixes before release to the public. So there's that kind of element as well, which hinders me a little bit in some of the things that I do. Essentially, I haven't spent a lot of time benchmarking the hardware, which will never typically match the 2D screen frame rates you can get from a monitor. Remember that the GPU is working harder to produce the scenes you're looking at in rendering for each eye. One thing I did note with a recent software update and firmware update from Pimax, and also the last patch from ED, as well as some patches from NVIDIA, that there was a real boost in general performance for my VR experience. Although I mentioned in a couple of videos ago for the DCS sit rip that that impacted some people negatively. So results can also vary. Additionally, with the Pimax software, that interface got a little bit of a tidy up as well. And it looks a lot more polished visually compared to when I first downloaded it. It looks a lot more uh, like a finished product rather than a sort of beta testing version. So I was pleased that they did that. Now I'm running the crystal through an Asus 
4080 RTX GPU, an i9-11900 CPU with 64 gigs of RAM, and it generally runs pretty well. Remember though, I'm often recording at the same time while running the headset. It's also projecting onto my 2D screen as well. So the system is really working a lot of rendering and data transfer tasks while also running the game. So that can be pretty taxing on the average system. In simple terms though, I look for overall performance and aesthetics rather than getting too hung up on frame rate pursuits as a pure measure of my enjoyment of the game and the headset experience. I usually have my settings cranked as well, so I don't expect to have whopping frame rates in VR because of that. Overall, and notwithstanding some glitches and dips in performance, I really, really love the visual experience that this system provides. That's what I was looking for, that's what I care about, and that's what Pimax delivers for me. Decent frame rates and really high visuals. What I do like is that you can easily read everything in the cockpit you need to, either with a periphery vision experience or by focusing your eyes on the dials or readouts or other similar cockpit device and MFD, etc. You can see what you're looking at and you get pretty decent peripheral vision as well. The foveated viewing system is really nice along with the built-in eye tracking from Toby. And all of these things, I guess, are a little bit in a state of flux. I have seen some videos recently of the wide field of view lenses that they have as well. But overall, I'm very, very satisfied with the general views I get. Has a pretty decent refresh rate as well, up to 120 hertz. I have mine set at 70 hertz. I think that was a tip that I got via mover, via WAGS. That provides a degree of stability given the high quality and the pixel density per eye. Again, it'll never compete with a 2D monitor as the tech stands right now, but I expect that that will change as the technology continues to evolve. GPUs become more powerful and any other software tweaks we are continuing to get as the game and as this technology improves. I have to say the visual experience really gives you the impression of being in the aircraft. You feel like you're part of the machinery rather than looking through that letterbox when you're using a 2D monitor. So this definitely is a restrictive feeling. And one thing that I did hate with Track IR was that it loses some point of center as you're moving your head around, especially in BFM situations. And you find that you're no longer looking where you were supposed to be and you have to recenter it which is really annoying, especially if you've got your head halfway over looking at something that's going on around you and you have to recenter it because you're sort of off kilter. Now with VR, you obviously have a pretty wide field of view generally, much better than, as I said before, that letterbox feel with the 2D screen. And Pimax is pretty good at delivering that experience with one of the widest fields of view in the VR business at up to 130 degrees on the diagonal. I haven't compared these new lenses that we mentioned before, but the standard ones are pretty decent. And it doesn't suffer, as I said before, from that off-center track IR issue, as long as the headset doesn't slip or move around on you. It's much easier to track objects in 3D space than it is in the 2D environment. So this is really handy for being able to, as I said before, glance at instruments while keeping your primary vision outside the cockpit to match that 80-20 rule typically used in real world flying of fighter aircraft. That peripheral vision is great as it's also coupled with the Toby eye tracking. So the need to move your head around, say as much with products like Track IR is a little bit redundant. Uh, you can do much more with your eyes than what you can with the uh, traditional head tracking systems. It's really, really beneficial. So this really is an area where I think VR exceeds over the 2D environment. There's something about the 3D vision experience that makes it just a little bit easier to spot other aircraft over high resolution screens generally and maintain visual once you've acquired your target. Although this is still challenging in the real world, in fairness, it's not easy to do. Nonetheless, I've really appreciated the ability to spot in VR and DCS compared to the 2D traditional screen. Now we talked a little bit about the foveated views, which do take a little bit of getting used to. The focused area of your eyes is what is in focus and in high detail. So things in the periphery are slightly less clear, which is designed to not only mimic to some degree the way in which our eyes work, it also has the added benefit of not forcing the computer to render everything within the peripheral vision in high resolution. Uh, this should reduce the amount of work being done by the GPU and in theory help maintain our frame rates, which are crucial. But of course I'm simplifying rather a lot, but you get the drift. Now that I've been flying for a couple of months with the headset and it's up and running, I generally haven't had to mess with anything. Occasionally I forget to turn it off and the battery will drain if the gap is long enough between flight drinks, but this hasn't been a frequent issue. I did end up 
based on watching movers video purchase an additional strap just to support the device on my head so this is a comfort strap um, you can put it where you want basically in the system pretty easy just velcro and it just provides a little bit of extra cushioning there over the basic strap which you can see is is pretty thin and doesn't offer the same level of support it works i guess it depends on the shape of your head and all that kind of stuff i'm bald so i have a um no extra grip from here or anything like that um so this is a little bit more comfortable for me and i don't have a huge noggin either i have a generally a smaller head so um and this extra padding was was really beneficial and i got that from again mover thank you mover for sharing that uh that was by studio form and they actually sent it all the way out from new zealand they're a new zealand company apparently so definitely beneficial in terms of providing a little bit more comfort providing a little bit more uh, support and unlike mover though i don't have a neck that's been hammered by looking around for enemy aircraft during hygiene maneuvers so i don't find the weight of the headset uncomfortable in general and i would have purchased pimax's own support pad but they were sold out at the time so studio form came to the rescue for me and uh, sent one out which has been really nice i haven't used the extra eye padding that comes with that uh, particular package as well so overall i'm very very impressed with what the unit is producing again in terms of the clarity in terms of the performance the subsequent immersion and the comfort of the headset a lot of people complain about the weight it hasn't bothered me again um you probably saw casmo tv's discussion about that where he uh said hey compare it to uh nvgs and stuff like that uh this is nothing all right well let's talk about some cons and while i said for me there's setup is relatively straightforward i can see some people finding that a little bit overwhelming not so much in the hardware plugin and getting the unit to be detected but getting the software dialed in that supports the headset so things like open xr and pimax vr and other software add-ons are all mechanisms for getting more control over your settings and adding a little bit more control over the unit itself it isn't straight plug and play hardware and for the uninitiated i think this again might prove off-putting as i mentioned in the intro in some ways the unit feels more experimental in that sense and it can be a little bit more research bound in terms of getting the setup to simply run dcs like all new things at first it's a bit intimidating but time and familiarity overcome the steep setup experience and as i said this is all relative depending on your comfort level with hardware and software and stuff like that one of the biggest pain in the necks for me was recording in vr um i've gone through a lot of research and monkeying around to get some halfway decent recordings worthy of watching this is another area which is not entirely intuitive and required research to unravel the mystery of that i'm still tweaking settings and experimenting and there are all sorts of rabbit holes to run down in this area and not all of them lead to helpful conclusions naturally enough so it's fiddly to use in that sense and um, it can be a little bit frustrating from time to time I noticed too where the visuals aren't great they can be pretty awful and it depends on certain maps depends on certain um, conditions as well so you will get sort of blurry uh, I definitely haven't quite found my uh, DLAA settings to be perfect uh, a lot of you complained about the head twitching during my F15E video those kinds of things are still stuff I haven't quite nutted out some of it I'm not sure necessarily if it's me the rig that i'm running the thing on or if it's just um, the system um, the newness of the f-15e as an aircraft and all those kinds of things so there's there's a combination of variables that i haven't quite nutted out yet so it does have a pass-through system which is pretty cool and it allows you to see the desktop it uses the cameras on the front so there are several uh, cameras here that you can see that uh, it's in black and white these are sensors as well this is why you don't need the lighthouse system to allow the unit to measure measure itself in time and place if you like or time and space you essentially double tap the headset and it switches over to the pass-through system i found that essentially froze up on me for dcs world and i don't know why yet um, hopefully that's something that can be rectified i'm gonna have to see if that again is an issue my end or something that needs working on uh, pimax's end in short i think the biggest challenge for vr is the transition to become fully independent of your real world controls in order to interface with aspects of the game that's something that will happen for me personally as i spend 
more time mapping things. So while the pass through would be helpful, I think more time getting my own setup would also assist me with that whole interface as well. And obviously it varies between different aircraft. Bottom line though, this is not simply plug and play hardware. Like I said before, you're gonna to need to devote some time then as well as potentially some money to get the headset that works for you based on your budget and all the rest of it. All right, so another little quirk here. This is something that, that I actually picked up from Casmo TV. As you're donning and doffing, that's a nice term for you, donning and doffing. As you, uh, for those of you in the military might recall what that means, maybe law enforcement, firefighters. Um, as, so as you're putting this on or taking it off, there are some little controls, which you can see there on the um, right-hand side and the left-hand side um, of the headset. The left-hand side, where's my, my button? Finger will find the button there. That controls the distance or the interpupillary distance. So your, your pupils um, and focusing, and you can bump that. On the other side, you've got the off switch and you've also got the volume control. And so those should probably have been put somewhere else or just further in, and maybe there just wasn't space. I don't know uh, if Pimax is ever considering an upgrade to this unit. I know that they've got another one coming out too. That is a little bit of a problem. Now, I don't know if they could have put it on the side, but they do have, there is a, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there is a, you won't be able to see that. Maybe just, there's a USB-C, um, port there, which you can plug the unit in while you're flying. I got a great tip from uh, somebody who helped me out with that. And it relies on a battery when you have it turned on. And the only drawback of that, of course, is that it's going to drain. If you have a really long flight, potentially you may run out of juice. So you can plug this in and have it uh, uh, powered independently. Once you turn off the screen, it will trickle charge and recharge through the USB cable. Some people have gone for an optic cable, apparently. That gives better performance, but it doesn't charge as well, or so I've heard uh, in the comment sections that I've seen on um, uh, the forums for Pimax crystals. And the other thing it has is there is a switch on the back side here, which it's going to be impossible to show you that, but um, it can run independently as a, as a separate unit, or it can be paired to the PC, which is what I have it in right now. And I believe it can run as a Wi-Fi, but I haven't tried that, and I don't think that would be recommended for DCS World just because of the amount of data going back and forth. It's a, it's a lot. So thanks to Casmo for pointing that out, and it, and it is a little bit of a, like I said, a design issue as you remove the headset from your head, donning and doffing. Um, yeah, you get this potential for hitting the buttons. I've gotten better at doing it. It used to happen all the time when I first... Um, uh, was wearing it, but after a couple of months, I've gotten better at avoiding that particular issue. Well, lastly, as we wrap up here, is it worth the money and does it match the hype? And in some respects, this is subjective. As I've said and indicated, I think it is. I absolutely love what VR does for DCS World. It's fantastic. And as I said before, I can't go back to 2D. It's just been ruined by VR, even with all the tinkering and the remapping and all the other things that I have to personally figure out with my desktop. Uh, including some MFD displays that I that I use, or at least um, MFD interfaces. Yeah, it just completely blows me away. So whether or not this crystal system is within your budget, obviously, again, that's going to be up to you. And whether or not you're up to transitioning to VR, again, is going to be a personal choice. All I can tell you is that from the moment you first experience the visuals that this HMD provides, that first experience, uh, you'll never see DCS in the same way again, literally. Uh, it absolutely blew me away, and I love what Pimax has provided. I love the direction that they're generally going in, and I'm looking forward to further improvements to the hardware that we have and the software, which is only going to keep me hooked on the Pimax Crystal and VR flying for now. So let me know what you think about VR, if you're a VR user, uh, whether or not uh, you are considering what are the impediments for you to get into VR. Maybe it's price point. Maybe it's just some other impediment that won't allow you to get into it. And I'd like to hear from you about that. And if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, share and all the rest of it and comment in the comment section below. Thank you to all of you who provide support through the super thanks button. We'll see you next time on the DCS sit ramp and any of my other videos involving things like this 
for DCS World. Cheers. I think I just turned it off.